Wizard, you're looking good today. You'd make a nice lead in G.I. Jane 2. A what? Yeah, G.I. Jane 2, you know. The, here. Wizard just slapped the shit. That's going to be an engine out job to get that out so we can repair it. 13750 Welcome to Hoobie's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and this is my 2013 Ferrari 458 Spider that unlike a lot of purchases where I buy them sight unseen to disastrous results, I actually flew out to see this thing in person in Las Vegas and purchased it the cheapest 458 for sale in the USA, maybe the cheapest sale ever of a running and driving car. $99,999 for this car with 86 thousand miles and a rebuilt salvage title history and not from a nice accident it was ran off the road thrown into a ditch the airbag was deployed it was badly badly wrecked but when you look at it now you really cannot tell that this thing had such a troubled life now the lights on the dashboard and the boogered up interior bits do point to a different story and the high mileage eighty six thousand miles is pretty unheard of for these cars but it does run and drive fantastically and I didn't drive it home to Kansas from Las Vegas but it did seem to drive very well. It was, it was driven around and soiled quite a bit by my friend Video Bob but now it is here and well I didn't do a mechanical pre-purchase inspection before I bought it so that's what I'm doing now a post-purchase inspection to see how bad this thing is. Will we find any bad evidence of that accident history once we get it in the air if we can get it in the air because it's been well slammed to the ground. Will there be any leaks that I didn't see or any serious issues with an 86,000 mile Ferrari 458? And since we don't really have much service history over the last five years, what does this car need? Now, I do need to make one correction thanks to Dan at Normal Guy Supercar and a few of you telling me, well, the transmissions, they can really blow up at any time. It doesn't matter the year. I said in my previous video that the early year car is going to have this issue where the transmission mixes its fluids, the coolant and the oil, and blows it up. But uh, I guess that could happen at any time. But the previous owner of this car thinks the transmission may have been rebuilt, but there is absolutely no record of that. And it does drive really, really well, like I said. So. Fingers crossed on that, but I'm procrastinating here because I don't want my balloon pop. So let's hit the road to the car wizard. So I'll talk about the things that I know are broken. Actually, before we head up to the car wizard, I'd like to mention I have an all new shirt at hoobiesgarage.com. It's totally unrelated to the car in today's topic. And uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's a nice shirt with a bright theme that will certainly liven up your wardrobe. So check that out, link below, along with Hoobies Garage stickers and keychains. I'm going to briefly go over some things that I missed in the previous video because there was just so much, but the paint really does present well. You get close, you see things like, well, there's a crack right there in the paint, a lot of chips, a little bit of orange peel in this fender here, so I wonder if this is where it was hit. I mentioned the brakes being converted. Those are Nissan GTR steel brakes, no more ceramics, Subaru WRX in the rear, but the tires, you see we have Falcon Azinus on the front. And uh, I think Bridgestone's on the back. So long gone are the Pirellis or some Michelin PS4s or something you'd want to put on this car. Uh, interesting tire choice. There's also sort of a weird, like, uh, discoloration in the hatch there. Kind of like a Gorbachev kind of spot. Don't know if it's picking up on camera. But the wizard's not going to restore this thing cosmetically. It's going to be the mechanics, which, well, there's... Plenty of things to look at. Another thing I didn't point out is the dashboard, which is all curled up up here. You can see along the windshield, pretty normal Ferrari stuff. But when you start it up, you are greeted with lots of lights. Here they come. AVH system, number plate failure, TPMS failure, airbag failure. There it is. And the check engine light, as you saw, goes off after a few moments, but uh, you ignore all those lights, you hit one button, really, and then you don't see them. Well, you gotta cut a bunch of times to clear out all the errors. Then you've got your gauges, and you're on the road. Now, just getting out of my driveway is a chore, because this thing is so, so low. You have to be so careful in this thing, uh, because it was lowered to look really, really cool, but in Kansas, the roads aren't as nice as they are in Vegas, so that's something I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to raise it up, which I'm told this is still on the factory adjustable shock, so hopefully, that's an easy thing to do. Handling though, I'm doing some turns out of my neighborhood. It feels really tight and nice and that sense for a high mileage car that's been wrecked. Nothing feels off, which is nice. One thing that does seem off though, this is the last normally aspirated mid-engine V8 Ferrari. 570 horsepower. Tires are a 
a little cold. But the exhaust is, well, it's not that exciting. And that's pretty normal for factory exhausts. They're a little muffled. They kind of have to be to meet regulations. Entering the highway here. Drives great. It, it feels awesome. A little jittery being cold and with the weird tires on it, but <laughs> fantastic. So I think the drivetrain's okay, but there are plenty of things to look at. There's a lot of missing bolts and fasteners. The more I look, the more uh, a little sketchy, but we'll see. Mizu! Oh! I... Whoa, whoa, oh. starting off strong there. Okay, sorry. I'm... I didn't ask, did I? How about this, huh? It's beautiful. It's something for sure. <laughs> Under 100 grand salvage title, 86,000 miles. In the Ferrari world, this is a pariah, but to me and you, this is. Oh, this is a thing of beauty, isn't it? This is gold right here. Yeah, well, cosmetically it's pretty good. It has a few little spots, which I was pointing out earlier. There's some more around there. This fake, this with this, whatever this is, not real carbon fiber, that has to come off. And the ride height is too low for Kansas, so we'll need to raise it back up. It's the factory adjustable coilovers. I hope they're still on there. Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, you got lights that are on, airbag, AVH, something, whatever. There's There's stuff going on. It's like a Christmas tree? A little bit. And uh, video Bob, well, he drove this thing around. I left it with him in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And he left a little present in the seat. <laughs> oh. <sighs> but uh, he also said, because he was poking around, to look in the battery area because it was sketchy. So, well, shall we, I guess? Yep, let's do it. It smells like someone ate burritos and had trouble with them. It doesn't. It doesn't smell like that anymore. It, it does, does smell like burritos. It does. Head. It's. It smells like Italian leather. It smells nice, doesn't it? Yeah, I can smell. It. <laughs> what in the world is that? There's a subwoofer that's it loose. Kind of hangs there. Yes, it just chills out. So let's take a look here. Yeah, this button doesn't work for the glove box, by the way. So you have to pull this to to open it. Okay. But yeah, battery back. What the? Are they trying to communicate with aliens? With the tin foil or? It, what is that? Is that for, I think he has a dash cam and then this phone charger here. So is it's aluminum foiled to Why? hold it there? What in the world? Look at the battery. It's like the, the hold downs are neat. That's not the correct battery for this. Well, I imagine the correct Ferrari battery is probably expensive, and if it fits in there, why spend the money? There's more tin foil. Well, <laughs> what's what's with the tin foil, Tyler? Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Let me show you one other thing that's uh, kind of interesting here. So a little money was saved on the battery, and also a little money was saved in here. That's the cabin air filter, which is... Uh, that's like in an Easter basket. You get the Easter grass and no, your... I think it's a home filter, you know, oh. like a, we put in your furnace or something. What? Yeah, it's like hair. Yeah, so that works. Why? Uh, but... <laughs> Why out of 458 would you do that? Well, it's like 100 bucks, you know? You can do that and you have filtered air, right? Uh, I don't get it. <laughs> you, can, you can put a cabin air filter on there yes. for sure. But one thing I am noticing, too, when I was in here, like, no clips exist at all it's like they're all gone which i don't know if they just weren't replaced from the accident or they all broke when somebody was in here one time but there's no clips oh my goodness so somebody's definitely been in there yep it sounds expensive already <laughs> i don't know what how much ferrari clips are but uh yeah there's a a few missing i'm curious though as low as this thing is how we're gonna get it on the lift we have to put some uh, like two by sixes in front of each wheel that you can drive up on it. I don't know. Maybe we might need even two of them. It's very low. Yeah. Well, let's it give it a shot. It doesn't help with those fake carbon fiber deals either. Well, those can take a hit because I'd love to just take those off. Okay. So we'll have to drive up on these, but don't go too far and try not to spin the wood across the shop. Oh, so be smooth. Yes. Okay. Well, that's not smooth. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> it's a 570 horsepower supercar is Let what happened. The front ones are on. Daniel worked at Ferrari. Yes. And 
has all the tricks. Loves the 458. He's more excited than me about it, it seems. I'm pretty darn excited, though. But uh, <laughs> he's using my 355 bearings to to lift the car because you can't really use your arms, huh? Right. Those are kind of like a puck. They fit right on the jack point perfectly. Oh, well, it's got a little bit of an O face to it. I'm like. Hey! Diablo! With no bonnet. It's still making the noise. Yeah. Can you hear it? Yeah. Can't really hear it from out here, though. No, uh, you gotta be in the car with the windows closed. It's really pronounced. That's, that's the sucky thing about diagnosing it, is inside it is so, so loud, that moan. And then on the outside, you can't hear it, especially with the new exhaust. So I, we actually just made it harder with the exhaust wizard. Oh, you're on Tinder or something? Yeah, I was swiping. Uh, okay. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you're married. This is wizard will kill me. <laughs> he needs to do that. So this is going to be real hard. Yeah, it's a little tricky. Some people in the comments were mentioning a throwout bearing, but it does it in any gear. It does it in any gear. It does it when the car is not moving, too. And it does it in neutral, rolling down the road. So it's it's not. So they're saying wheel bearing, saying transmission. They were saying something with all-wheel drive. No, no. It just, you rev it and it does it. It sounds like air going over a piece of sheet metal or something, like a, like a clarinet. Yeah. Anyway, back to the Ferrari. Okay. All right, well, here we go. One thing the previous owner told me, he bought it fixed already. Well, fixed, but uh, they didn't put an AC condenser in it after the accident. He lives in Las Vegas, so obviously he had to add that to have AC again, which is probably around here, which is probably where the, the hit was, right? Down in there. Is that it? Either that or this side. Probably there. Okay. Oh, that's a condenser right there. All right, so this would have been the damaged side or both and I'm looking I'm not seeing anything real bad did the previous owner invest in any stock with Taco Bell uh, no it's I keep it's, getting a wafting smell it like, smells fine you're choking I know video Bob farted in it but it, it it's fine I'm less worried about that and more worried about like so you tub damage or something that, that these are obviously adjustable and they had some marks made mm -hmm. we can definitely go back up to what's specified to be or as high as you want really but yeah do you like these brakes yeah they're from a nissan a nissan huh yes no more ceramic brakes from ferrari so they matched them up with a nissan on the front and a subaru on the back hey whatever works yep i don't see anything leaking there yeah and uh <clears throat> not really seeing any tub damage so far which is good there's some more missing fasteners and oh, things. Oh, yeah, that's all. All that around there is that's, missing. That's a, that's a different screw there. That's not factory. That looks like Home Depot. Yeah, all right. It's a little damage there. But yeah, you mentioned it's been, been in a wreck. So there's some scrapage going on there. Nothing leaking. Nissan brakes, huh? Nissan on the front, GTR. WRX in the back. Very cool. That'll be cheaper for maintenance. I don't see anything going on up here. Yeah, well, it's a rear-wheel drive car, so there's not going to be anything. So if we remove really... these Home Depot screws here, yeah, this will come off your your fake carbon fiber seals. Oh, wonderful! Rockers, whatever you want to call. Uh, that sounds great. That'll be easy to take off. It seems like there should be something here. Oh yeah, they're the remnants of it. Like a belly panel. Oh, an underbody panel for the back. Yeah. Yeah, it seems uh, seems like it's gone, and this may be a little bit Oof. either just being so low, or that may have been from the accident. This kind of undercoating that's scraped. Did Could... Video Bob hit something and had his <laughs> accident in the seat? Or... I don't think so. But... No, I don't think he did. Yeah. So yeah, there's no way all this should be exposed. Whatever. What is this? That's a nice little. Yeah. Right there. Is that a tank of some kind? The fuel tank. tank. And the fuel pump module. It's a fuel tank, yeah. Oh, with a little dent in it. You know exactly what you want to see. This one's okay over here. Yeah. There's the transfer between the two. All right. Well, yeah. It's not leaking. No, but that was definitely a whack for sure. 
Interesting. Okay. Wacko. Nothing leaking on the front of the engine. You don't have to worry about timing belts. No, timing chain motor, mm -hmm. normal accessory belt, no engine outs on these. Mm -hmm. Nothing leaking there. Nothing going on there. Huh. Well, it, there's a, not something I'm probably supposed to see, right? Well, there should be a cover here. You see the screws mm -hmm. the bolt holes? Well, that's your flywheel. You can see they scraped pretty bad up there. I yeah. imagine you could do some damage on this if you weren't paying attention. You could right. just come through and break stuff. Well, we definitely need to raise this car back up. Oh, yeah. Ken just can't do this kind of stuff. There is some tiny seepage something going on. See the gunk? But it's not dripping or causing any puddles. That's good. Transaxle is nice and dry. CV boots are good. Your brake pad wear sensors, because they changed it over to different brakes, they've all just zip tied them out of the way. Yeah. Oh. But okay. No leaking struts. CV boots are okay. Really not that bad. Oh, that's a. That's nice. No bolt here. That looks like a bolt off of a kid's playground playset or something. Oh. Uh, so what? This is this one bolt is holding this entire thing on. Yes. Well, there's a few here, but all that has to do is catch a little air or something, and then it would just fold right. backwards. So the belly pan that should be here would attach, or these spots here. I see. You can see the remnants of it here. Okay. But that's missing, so they just put a playground bolt in there. Perfect. Daniel's over here working on a Viper. He can't help himself. So how many four or five eights have you been under in your lifetime? Hundreds. Hun okay. Well, okay. Give it a quick look here. So what are we missing? I mean, th that's that's a cover that should be existing, right? Nope. No. Have a cover there. So just a part of the belly pan. I did notice this bad boy right here. What's what's that? So this is just a, uh, an oil pipe that connects the oil tank with the uh, with the oil pump. Oh, the dry sump tank. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this right here is not supposed to be bent or crinkled. That it's pretty stressed. So that could sprout a leak anytime. I've seen them leak before, but this is this is pretty bad. Yeah. Well, there's so also a nice dent here on the fuel tank. Uh, yes. So on these fuel tanks, the uh, the actual fuel pumps actually connect to the bottom there. Um, this could affect your oil, your uh, fuel level. Uh, but if you know, I'll take a look at that. Um, I actually had a car where I had to drop the whole rear to take the fuel tanks off and replace them because of some. Okay, get them, them get them out of here. Get them out of here. No, 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 they're down. Back yeah. to the Viper. Yeah. <laughs> I, wanna, I had good news. Yeah. Okay. He's a little too excited. To yeah, work yeah, through. he's ready. No engine outs. No, 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 no. But no leaks. Nothing no. crazy. It's scanning and it's finding it's... fault after fault after fault. Well, it's an Italian car and a modern Italian car, so. The majority of those will be low voltage, I imagine, just tripping things, right? Very likely. The airbag one is one light that's always on. And I was told that it was just a seatbelt sensor. Seatbelt? On a car that's been crashed. Front passenger side pretensioner. Okay. So, so it's been blown, the pretensioner. And then there's an AVH light, which is. Auto vehicle hold. Parking brake? No, uh, basically, if you're in a hill. It prevents the car from rolling back. No faults. And he told me that light came on after he changed the battery. It wasn't on before. Mm. Normal. But it won't go away. Rear ceiling lamp, license plate lamps. Yes, I do have an error for their license plate lamp. Yep. So what module is this? NBC. The, like, wait, like NBC, like the network is not getting Jimmy Fallon or something? It what? could be. Maybe he has something to do with this. Well, is that triggering a light? It says no symptom, it has a data error. Oh, well, just hit the reset then. Please. 99. It says successfully erased. Very good. So, obviously, there needs to be some digging on some things. A seat belt. You have to look at the prices on this stuff. Clips. There's a few things to do, but nothing dire. Although, the more he looks at it, the worse things get. So, yes. Anyway, I'll just come back. I might have to get the whip and keep him under control with it. Yeah, I'll come back and let you guys do a thorough, thorough once over, and then you can hit me. But I guess I can drive something home. The I can drive the Mustang home, right? I paid yes, for it. It's done. It's been waiting for it's you. It's warm enough, and I've already paid for it, so I don't have to go and pay a bill. There's no bill. It's my first time doing this since you did all these things. Yes. 
It's been so cold. Okay. Well, it didn't have a key before because it was just a full race car here. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a 66 Mustang GT350 that uh, was a Hertz Ren Racer. And then it became a race car back in period. And then somebody converted it to be a Group B legal race car. Uh, didn't have a key, which it does now. Okay. Yep. Now we have things, things, things. There's the fuel pump. It's a loud one. And you've been busy, I see, but uh, you did something cool with the Lamborghini. Still, we don't know the source of the noise, but you've done something, right? Yeah, I ordered a thing called a chassis ear. It's like wireless little microphones that I can place all over and go drive it. And it can tell you where the noise and kind of isolate where it's coming from. So you can do a channel and if you hear the uh, then that'll be yeah. what it is. And you'll put the, like, the microphone on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I see a lot of stuff is off the 458, which... Did you really need to do that? Uh, the wheels are off and all of the liners are off. And all the bolts, which, uh, boy, that's a lot of non-Ferrari looking bolts, huh? Oh yeah, there's a lot of, I don't know if you call it Home Depot or Lowe's or parts bin bolts. I see, so what possessed you to remove all of these things? To see if there's any damage or see if things, anything's broken. We knew that it was been an accident. We didn't want to blindly say it looks good without actually looking. I think somebody just wanted to take it apart. I think so. <sighs> All right, so did you find anything interesting? We did. Actually, we're glad we took it apart. I'll raise it up and I'll show you. Okay. Wizard, you're looking good today. You'd make a nice lead in G.I. Jane 2. A what? Yeah, G.I. Jane 2, you know. The... So we can see here that when it was in its accident, this framework must have got damaged and they just got a good used one and kind of just scraped it and welded it on. Interesting. Is it perfectly accurate or like it was from the stock? I'm not too sure, but... Okay, well I see the welds, I see where they scraped it, they didn't paint it, so this would be, I guess you'd call this a radiator support, wouldn't you? Or what yeah. would you call it? Front bumper support, radiator support, it does a whole lot of things all in one. So that got smashed on this side for sure, but the actual frame rail itself looks okay, huh? Yeah. It didn't get bent or, you know, pulled back. Doesn't look like it was replaced either, huh? You can see where they scraped and welded up front up there. Okay. So this just took the hit over there. What about the other side? Uh, same thing, huh? Yep. Okay. Same story. So it would have just folded in when it went into the ditch, which makes sense. So this would have all been destroyed, probably, the radiators. He said the condenser for the air conditioning was gone. So that makes a lot of sense, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. As far as anything serious, structurally, it looks good, huh? There's lots of nuts and bolts and things missing, and there is some definite work that needs to be done to this car. So you've figured up something for me? Oh, yes. Office time. It's gonna be a bad shopping trip, I imagine. And it is, ooh, a Winslow Homer? Yes. Towing the boat, 1878, $375,000. Now I know you just bought a mega mansion, but yeah. you need a $375,000 painting for it? Well, I'm hovering right over the make an offer button. <laughs> There's no way my Hoopy Ferrari's paying for that. There's not enough clips and fasteners in the world to pay for that. Well, we'll see. Well, how is the mansion, Life Wizard? It is excellent. <laughs> I haven't told anyone on my channel about that yet. Oh, sorry. All right, well, a yacht. He bought the yacht before the mansion, but anyway. So. I have <laughs> good news, bad news, and <laughs> lots of news. Mm, yes. So you know we found the dent in your fuel tank as we were looking it over. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be an engine out job to get that out so we can repair it. 13,750. <laughs> But the fuel tank's working, it's not leaking, it's not messing up the fuel pumps. I just have slightly diminished fuel capacity with a dent going up. <laughs> and Probably a quarter of a gallon. Over. 13,000, no, 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 no. No? No, thank you, we'll pass. But... Oh, but we'll, we'll pass. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. Huh. 
<clears throat> so we got multiple clips, bolts, retainers missing. Just mm -hmm. those alone, 350 bucks. The okay. labor, we got multiple clips, bolts, retainers missing, 350 bucks. That's just for the bolts and retainers See, and everything. That's that's not buying you a paint. 350 that's less than 1% or whatever. Was, was that 1% or 0.1%? It's like 0.1%. There you see. <laughs> You're a long way to go. The belly pan under the engine is missing. It's just gone. Yes. 2500 bucks for that. I mean, it it's been like that for years and it doesn't need it. Well, it's good for aerodynamics and it keeps dirt and debris out of the engine. And... I'll keep it off the dirt and we'll just... You're, you're not helping me with No, that. no, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, damn it. There's cracks in the trunk tub underneath where they had the impact. I can fiberglass that here in the shop for 400 bucks. I mean, it's good for the water to leak out of if there's little cracks and things, but right? Water can get in. Uh, well, I, I won't drive it too much in the rain then. It's fine. It's you're, just, you're killing me. Here. You don't need a fiberglass. It's fine. Okay. So my trunk is a little smashed from that? The bottom just has a crack where it like popped and broke and then it came back together. You can see a crack running through it. It's fine. It's totally fine. Yeah. All right. And then the rear diffuser on the back is missing an entire fin. What a shame. I can probably make a fin for you. <laughs> and put it together for 500 bucks. <laughs> it's all right. No? No, I mean, what it has five out of six fins. Yeah. So that's 80 plus percent of finnage under there. It's, it's fine. Yeah, that's better than my college GPA. We'll, we'll keep it. Yeah, that's... Don't you want this thing to look presentable though? It looks fine. You don't see it. It's, it's underneath the car. Yeah. Wow, okay. Oh, are we flipping the page now? Yeah, we're turning to the second page. Right? Okay. So we need to replace the battery with the correct battery. Mm. Put all the hold downs correct and everything. That's 450 for that. Maybe. Let's see what else you got. We got to remove all the tin foil and the chargers and all the weird stuff. We'll be in there anyways with the battery, so that'll be an additional $100. I see. Well, I suppose you can. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. TPMS sensors, it probably needs to go to a tire shop for that. They're, they're not even in the tires, they're gone. I'll get new tires and then have them put aftermarket sensors in, so you don't worry about that, sure. Okay. Then there's that corrugated oil tube that Danielson mentioned that mm -hmm. can blow out and you lose all of your oil. It's only 400 bucks parts and labor to replace that. Okay. Well, you can do that along with a, a service, I guess, right? Yeah, I'll get to that here in a minute. Oh. Annual service, about 1500 bucks to go through fluids and check it all over and everything. How about just an oil change? That's part of the annual service, and there's more to it than that. Well, you just change the oil, right? Just change the oil. Yeah, jiffy lube it, you know? Probably two or three hundred bucks for that. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh my goodness. What? This, there's not much here. Oh, well, the warning lights, it would be nice to get those off. Those, we've actually already got those off. How? Well, there were seatbelt connections that were just disconnected. We don't know why, but when we reconnected them and cleared it, the AVH warning light went away. And the airbag light? And the airbag light. It's all happy again. So then my license plate bulbs, that was the only other error, right? Yeah, that's just because they're LED bulbs. It doesn't like them. It likes to see incandescent bulbs for the resistance. So a couple of bulbs and... So the car has no lights? No lights. No warning lights. Oh, wow. Okay, this is wonderful. And that's 500 bucks to take care of all of that. We're okay, all right. Sure. We were going to be in everything 21 grand. <laughs> that was going to be my down payment on the Winslow Rover. Uh, I'm sorry, I said no to a lot of things. So what did I say yes to? What's the 400 and... So there's the 450, the 100, the 400, 2 to 300, and yeah. 500. That's right about 1250, 1500 bucks, something like that. So I just bought a salvage title Ferrari without a pre-purchase inspection that has 86,000 miles, which is absurdly high for one of those cars. Mm -hmm. It was not treated nicely. And you're telling me all I need to do is $1,250 worth of work. Yeah. Uh, well, are you? Oh, oh. <laughs> this, this is a reversal here. He's, oh, he's down. Oh no. And he's not getting up either. Well, this is very interesting. I'm, I'm very much enjoying this office visit. 
Yes, unfortunately, the car wizard has not awakened yet. Maybe he will if you hit the subscribe button down below. Poke that enough times, well, just once, actually, and it may revive him from his coma. Also, Hoopy's Garage merch, the all-new t-shirt, which is certainly fire. It should ignite a lot of reactions with your friends and family if you buy it, along with Hoobie's Garage stickers and keychains. Like I said, if you tweet me at Hoobie's Garage after you buy the sticker and put it on your hoopty, maybe to cover up a wart, or put it on your hoopty keychain, I shall share it, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. So thank you all so much for your support, and thank you so much for watching.